Thermal cameras are useful, but they're also quite expensive. Let's have a look at an inexpensive way to implement low resolution thermal imaging. Panasonic created GridEye, an 8x8 thermal sensor to increase the efficiency of their air conditioners. It allows them to sense if there is someone in the room and where they are located. You can buy these sensors soldered onto breakout boards to allow easier use. This one from Adafruit has a regulator and level shifters on it, making it suitable for 3.3 or 5 volt use. The sensor itself can be purchased in 3.3 or 5 volt versions, and there are two different sensitivities available. The sensor I have is an AMG8833. The interface is I2C. In order to get it running, I have connected it to an Arduino board and programmed it with some example code that uses the Adafruit library and their pixel test example. I modified it to read out all 64 pixels in a one-line CSV style. This makes decoding the data easier because a complete frame can be detected by looking for the end-of-line characters. I created a small LabVIEW application to receive, decode, process, and display the data. An intensity graph is used to provide the usual thermal camera type display. Bytes received through the serial port are put into a shift register. Once a carriage return is received, a complete frame is sent to process and display. A moving average filter is used to reduce the noise from the sensor. I saw fluctuations of around 1 to 2 degrees before adding this filter. The 8x8 data is interpolated to give a smoother image. Without that, the data is quite chunky. Turn off the filter. And you can see the, the actual pixel data. With the interpolation on, it looks a lot more like a regular thermal camera. The maximum temperature is displayed in the top left corner. There's an order ranging, so every few frames it will recalculate the maximum temperature and adjust the range of the, the intensity graph. Let's explore the capabilities of the GridEye sensor with comparison to this real thermal camera. Got a power resistor here which was recently turned on. It's showing around 55. Good eyes showing a bit hotter, but it's it's comparable. This particular thermal camera is not very good at higher temperatures. It's it's unable to be calibrated. Let's have a look at another thing. The docking station over here has an active Thunderbolt cable connected to it. See a hot spot in the cable where the line driver is. The good eye can see that as a blob, but the temperature shows up quite a bit lower than what the, the real thermal camera can see. But if the good eye is put a lot closer, temperature is very comparable. That will be because the hotspot now covers at least one whole pixel on the grid eye. When it's pulled back, the hotspot only covers part of one of the pixels, so you get an, an average lower temperature for that pixel, whereas the real thermal camera with its much higher resolution sensor can see those, those smaller hotspots. Have a look without the interpolation. You can see there as the grid eye is moved away that the the temperatures averaged over the pixel size. And then as it's brought closer, the hottest part covers more than one pixel, so you can get an accurate temperature measurement. It might be possible to focus the, the grid eye sensor with cheaply available thermal macro lenses you can get on AliExpress.
The bird eye sensor is quite vulnerable to dirt and dust. Is it possible to protect it without adversely affecting the thermal measurement? I have a cover from a very old PIR sensor. This material should be able to pass the infrared. Check it with this camera. So the maximum temperature there is 42. With that in front of it, it goes down to 36. But the resolution of the image stays the same. It might be possible to compensate for that loss. Maximum 36. Maximum 32-ish. probably put a fixed offset in the software to compensate for the loss caused by this material. A small 3D printed enclosure could be created to mount these two side by side with a, an aperture for the, the port and then a, a little hole in the front with a sheet of this stuff over it. It's a camera pointing at the thermal camera screen and a bracket there to hold it roughly in position it's quite delicate